Hey guys, what's going on? Road Runner here. So, uh, I wanted to talk about something real quick. I noticed a lot of the people were talking about this, and I figured I'd put my own thoughts into this. And that is, uh, winter surviving. Uh, as y'all know, this year, or just this previous winter, over in the state of Texas, when I was down there, we had not one, but two winter, uh, little winter storms that hit. And... Lufkin and the surrounding areas really wasn't prepared. Not for the first one and definitely not for the second one. So, uh, I mean, I kind of was, with my experience being on the road, I kind of already knew what to expect. And being in that homesteading, prepper, farming mindset, I kind of already had stuff ready. And I guess basically the here I I'll put it this way here's really what I did when we had those winter storms in Texas and I mean it it was bad you know I've seen snow in East Texas before but not like that you know this snow looked like stuff from the Northwest which is where I'm originally from so that's one of the reasons why I was actually kind of prepared for it because. I mean, being on the road, you got to be ready for everything, you know, I mean, I got, you know, then luckily being here on the farm, I actually have a lot, a lot of winter gear now with me again, since my other ones got thrown out, and, uh, you know, guys like Cooter, he has stuff stowed away in storage, and he has a sh nice shit ton of winter gear, you know, so, when... When we were in Texas, basically what I did, I knew from what people were telling me and what I saw in the temperatures and stuff, I knew it was most likely going to snow. So since I had chickens and stuff at the time, first off the chickens were all put in the coop and I had a tarp around it as well as some uh, blankets and stuff trying to keep the heat in for the chickens uh, so they wouldn't freeze to death, which luckily none of them were killed. And then... Uh, let me think, who else do we have? We didn't have, I didn't have my sheep yet. My rabbits were the only ones. I had, I think, one or two left, and they died. I don't remember how or why, but I think they froze to death, which is weird. But, um, anyways, when I came to me and the pups, now remember, Xena was still alive at this point, okay? So, it was me, Xena, Avery, and Marmaduke, and I think... Aria, so it was all five of us, right? And the one thing I think that we had that was most important was we had our military sleep system, okay? Now, what I did was, not only did I have our MSS, I put it on the bed lengthways, okay? like a, Just like a t normal, typical bed, okay? And I had my Wubby poncho liner that was over it and then I had some heavy blankets that were on top of it okay and the one thing I've learned being on the road with dogs is that if you can teach them how to go in your sleeping bag they'll actually lay they'll sleep with you during the night and that's how I actually uh, was able to stay warm was because and believe it or not I was actually able to stuff at least three of them I don't think I don't think Aria was willing to go in it but she was staying under the covers um, but, you know, the other three, since they were on the road with me for a while, uh, all knew to get in the sleeping bag. So we were, we were pretty relatively warm. I was barely shivering. Um, so, and I mean, that's usually something during, like, nights or maybe middays, you know, when you have no electricity whatsoever. Because our power did go out twice. And that was another thing, too, is, uh, I had, I had one solar panel on my window which I don't have anymore, I wish I had still, that was charging my phone, and it actually worked pretty well. And then I had uh, those camp ones, the inflatable ones, I actually have one over here in the window that's charging up right now, uh, that you can blow into. Oh! Hey! There's nobody here, chill. Get under that bed. Anyways, uh, fine, I'll look. See? Nobody there. Sorry. Anyways. Really do. Uh, <coughs> what was I saying? Anyways, and I had a couple of those, you know, so I had those around 
uh, I had a shit ton of candles. I don't think y'all even remember. I love candles. I like recycling candles. I love making candles. I had so many candles. I really wasn't worried about light. I wasn't worried about any of that stuff. Water-wise, I wasn't worried. Because of the fact that I think our gas was actually still working. Yeah, the gas was still working. And the water pipe itself actually busted. Which was not good. But the gas, I think, was the only thing working both times for like three or four days before the power finally came back on. So I was actually able to melt all that snow down and use it, you know, water the dogs and uh, bathe, you know, sponge bathe or whatever, which I do here sometimes. So, you know, just just something like that. You know, I think if you invest in uh, a couple of military blankets, you know, try to get some just normal, uh, heavy-duty, you know, blankets, you know, the ones that go, like, on those big mattresses and stuff like that. I think something like that would be, uh, helpful. Um, I don't recommend using gas-powered, uh, uh, what do they call those, uh, generators, because of the fact that one thing I've learned when I was in the fire department is it actually gives off, uh, carbon monoxide, which you don't want. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I mean, if you do have one, I would at least have it outside, maybe have it, like, in a garage that isn't connected to the house, have a power line run, or not power line, but a, uh, oh, that's the wind line. Anyways, uh, have a power cord running from the generator through a window that's open to your house right next door the window that's open is going to let that carbon monoxide out, okay? And then you got your power cord running through. Now, of course, uh, power generators are loud as hell, okay? So I really don't recommend using those. And they cost, not only do they cost a lot of money, but especially the gas prices these days, especially out west, are you kidding me? I'll never want to pay $5 a gallon for gas at California just to power my generator. Even Duke is smart enough not to do that. So anyways, uh, I would I would rather get solar panel, or if you know how to live without electricity like me, you might as well as do that. You know, there's nothing, there's always a way to survive stuff like that if you at least try to learn and understand it. Even if you live in an area where you wouldn't expect it. Most people, like when we get snow in East Texas, or just Texas in general, it's really not that much, like I mentioned earlier. It's maybe a couple centimeters, and then the next day or two, it's gone. People weren't expecting to have two, three, maybe, what was it, like a foot and a half to two and a half feet of snow, maybe three. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it was about two feet of snow, at least. So, um, I'm trying to think. I rem actually, I remember walking down to Dollar General to go dumpster dive. And just seeing all these cars on the side of the road, there was like at least 9 to 12 cars on the uh, loop, which is the highway that goes around Lufkin, that, uh, people, because people don't know how to drive them that stuff, people aren't prepared. So, because of that, uh, I, I really wish people would at least look into it, especially these days now, in Texas alone, considering the fact that our power grid is so far behind on uh, on basically the shape, you know, the durability of it, you know, people really need to realize that the whole system that they're depending on, the whole power system, even our grid alone, compared to the other two grids, is not as good as people think it is, which is one of the reasons why I do uh, prefer wind and solar and stuff like that. You know, I'm not saying that we don't need to have uh, the power system we have now, I'm, but what I am saying is not as good as people think it is. You know, it went down twice. And the only, the only one people were really seemed to be worried about was when it went down that second time. I don't know why people weren't freaking out the first time, but the second time when it went down, that's, that was, uh, I saw all the comments on Facebook, people were definitely terrified. I wasn't worried about it, but then again, I usually, especially at this time of the year, you can ask my grandmother, she'll probably comment on this. 
because she comments on my videos a lot. Uh, I mean, I literally, like right now, I only got three tops on and then three bottoms. Usually, when it gets colder, especially at night when it gets down to like the 20s and 30s, I actually have five to six tops on and three bottoms. And then plus my Gore-Tex boots and stuff. So anyways, that's just an idea. I wanted you guys to just realize that, you know, when a lot of people aren't as prepared as they should be when it comes to that stuff. And I really think, I really wish people would be. You know, I, I feel like when people, especially a lot of uh, the normal, you know, suburban families hear about, you know, oh, it's getting cold, go get a jacket. They always get the flashiest one. That's not going to help you. Really? Anyways, that's not going to help you. You know, it could be the flashiest, you know, $95 jacket there is. But, you know, it could, coming from somebody who dumpster dives, I mean, look at this. When me and Cooter were riding on, a, on the UP line... Through McAllister a couple months ago, what do I found on the go? What do I find in, a, in an abandoned homeless camp? A nice jacket, really, really nice warm jacket. I actually like it. Not my kind of style, but hey, it keeps me warm at night. So, anyways, I just want to get you guys thinking. I want you guys to think with all the cold going on, with the power supplies, or I'm sorry, the, the power system going down, especially in Texas, the last, the last two times we had a winter storm, what do y'all need to do? Need to get a jacket, need to get, you know, uh, food stored away, need to get water stored away, you know, I got, I got jugs right there, every time I find a jug, I clean it out, water goes right on top of my fridge, okay, you, I want y'all to think about that, you know, I don't do this for the views or, you know, try to get ads and stuff like that. I do it because I actually give a shit. Okay? So, anyways, I gotta go. I gotta go do shit. I'll see y'all later.